for JDI Display America. So can we have a, can we check it out? The, Certainly. Some of the latest stuff you Yeah, thanks here? for coming today. Come on, let's go take a look cool. at the automotive display. This is actually our 12.3 inch and 15 inch displays for automotive. I think you, I'd particularly like you to notice we won a Display Application of the Year award. Boom. And the purpose of this award is really to highlight a product that's in production. These products were introduced in the market last year, May 2018, for curved automobile application. And you can see from the picture, center stack as well as cluster. Yeah. The point is that there's a lot of displays in the automotive market, yeah. but there are none in production as of now for the curved instance. So and this that's, is in production? Yes, from last year. So it, there's already some cars with it, maybe? Yes, sir. They're coming? Yeah, no, it's already in production. Nice. A Volkswagen Model Touring SUV 2019. Whoa. And we have this with our pixelized capability too. The 15 inch center display utilizes our picture, pixelized in cell technology. Nice. And uh, you have lots more stuff. Oh, we've got so much to show you. Let me begin over here. We're showing an example of BT 2020 achievement here in a 17 inch 8K display. This display is 510 PPI, 120 hertz. And I want to have you notice the depth of the red, particularly off the color chart, if I can explain. The yellow is the normal LCD on the left side with an LCD LED backlight. The one on the right is with this laser backlight. And we can achieve the blue line being the BT2020 spec. The red line being is what we achieve here with this display, basically the same. So uh, this is uh, even better than what you had last year. Yes. Still 7.3 inch 8K. Yes, we had and applications like on multiple. That, that's true. We had a display like that last year with just the LED backlight. This has got the enhanced laser backlight for true color performance. Laser 8K 17.3. Yes. Nice. Thank you. And uh, you have a big presence of the LTPS smartphone. Oh, absolutely. LTPS was a very core technology of Tashit of JDI. Excuse me. Yeah. And this particular display, right now, it's showing you 5 hertz on both. The left side is our advanced LTPS. The right side is the normal LTPS with 5 hertz application. What you're really trying to see here is the power consumption on the left, Whoa. 27, 29, 31, being less than 47, 50 on the right. And if you zoom out, you may see that on the right side, we've got a flicker issue. It's at 5 hertz operation. Without improvements, we would have flickers. So the left side, you can see, is a rock solid image. So Match actually, lower power you get lower power with higher frame rate? No, no. We're, we're saying with the lower frame rate, which would is really save power, would really save power to have the lower frame rate. Yet, with a lower frame rate, you'd certainly have trouble with flicker. So we are saving power and overcome the flicker problem with the 5 Nice. Frames. And this is uh, already in production phones? No, this is an advanced uh, coming. model. Coming. So there will be right. some phones. With yeah, again, that's a real power. power saving for phones. That's right. Nice. These applications here really focus on virtual reality. Yeah. This particular one, we're looking at 3,840 pieces of mini LEDs with 960 segments. This is a direct local dimming backlight for a virtual reality application. Is it like mini LEDs? Very many, yes, yeah. mini, yes. And some other, this, this is 4K. This is all virtual reality things. This is a 4K by 2K 5.5 inch display with 818 PPI. One display in there. And this is also enabled by um, LTPS. LTPS. Certainly. Now that one, if you notice, 818 PPI. This one's in production. This one being 615 PPI, three and a half. So this is kind of a typical application. Two displays, one each for each eye. This one, though, I wish your camera could get in there and take a really good look. 1,058 PPI. You know, with, as soon as you get a display up to your eye, you're going to see screen effects in virtual reality. The higher and higher pixel density, you practically don't see a single small, tiny pixel. This one is hover sensing. You can maybe see that it's moving as I move my hand over it. Nice. So no need to touch anymore. No need to touch. Particular applications. We focused here on maybe hygienic applications. That's not just the case. You know, we can hover, have something kind of light up because you're near it, sensing your hand. I nice. want to go over to the right, if I may, and come back yeah. here a moment. We also have fingerprint sensing. This one, if you see my fingerprint here, please don't put this yeah. out there. <laughs> okay, sorry. 
No, that's yeah. fine. My point is, hey, my fingerprints yeah. on your video. On the internet, you, yeah. Right. Maybe it's not People a good can thing. use it at the passport control. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. yeah. Here again, this is another one. This particular demo, I'm not going to operate it, but yeah. right now it's the idea that we would put a finger on there, it would sense and validate the finger, and then if you put a different finger on there, it would say, hey, no good. That's not the same finger. So those those fingerprints are untransparent? Uh, this, is like a, this is like an LTPS capacitive type of LCD. It's glass-based. So could you so theory have silicon. it on the whole LTPS? We could in theory, but there's one more application instead, which I wanted to come back to. Yeah. Instead of being, say, embedded in this way, this is a flexible one. I want you to see that. This is the same capability in a plastic flexible case. So that when you think about it, if you were to put it on a credit card, which of course is flexible and bendable, nice. or here's an example, what if you had it on your steering wheel? Again, you get in the car, fingerprint, thumbprint, off you go. It's my car. And the resolution of the sensors? It's very, very high density. So course. it's full security? Oh, absolutely so. Yeah. Yes, sir. Nice. If we can start on the right for OLED technology yeah. here, the right side, right side shows a full RGB full resolution, uh, I'm going to forget the exact, 1080 by 1920 OLED. We're not in production with this product yet, but one thing we'd like to highlight is with the low temperature polysilicon, we really truly can get the full pixel density, red, green, blue pixel arrangement. So you use the LTPS on OLED? Yes, OLED. backplane, yes. And that helps a lot with the OLED? It certainly you? does with uh, not only the ability to have the electron mobility, and but also the density. It's really quite important. Nice. The next thing though, J OLED. Yeah, J OLED is a company that JDI has a very special relationship with. It's a Japan OLED. And they are in turn manufacturing printed OLED displays. This is printed? This is printed. But it looks so good. Thank you. So <laughs> this so one this is the future actually of the in OLED production. Is be well, its ability, you know, it's printed is different than the vapor depositionary you know, or the chemically vapor type like this one. Printed allows us to make very large displays with very large facility in a printed manner. But this, this looks like a fully, what would you call it, high class display. Oh, absolutely. Thank I you. thought the printed OLEDs were just in the early no, infancy of no, development. I'm please take a look. This is as high as 10 bit color, 204 pixel pitch. So is this the first time you show this? Uh, yes, at SAD it's the first time we've shown it. And the one to, this is actually in production, this particular display. In I, production? Yes, it is in production. It was introduced last year to the marketplace. But the one to your it left. It has to be expensive then, or is, isn't is the idea that a printer that can, in theory, get to lower cost? Well, it's certainly not where other typical, say, 21 inch monitors are. It's definitely for more high end application, maybe medical, maybe broadcast, radiology, things like that. But um, it's just made by printing now. Yes. Which I thought was supposed to potentially make this democratized OLED potentially is going to be huge because of the printing. Well, you know, we have to still ramp up the production capability. We have a lot of lessons to learn, but here's another example of it in 27 inch. It's also printed. Yes. This one's not in production, but this one is also 10 bit color depth, a little less pixel density. But I think if you see the blacks in here, particularly as Las Vegas image. All right. That looks so good. And I, I thought, you know, the, the other demos I've seen of the printed OLEDs seem like more like prototypes a little bit. No, no. This as I said, like this in production. Shipping. And actually, if you take this one, this one's really pretty cool, too. Are we filling up a juice glass? Seems nice. To be. Nice. Cool. And uh, then uh, I'll be... Uh, just, you know, let's say you're out there, <laughs> out there looking at an observatory, you're out there in the wilderness and you have a real live picture, maybe it's the mountains. Perhaps what you want to do is know something about those mountains. Well, that's Mount Fuji. So it's a transparent display? Yeah, and if you notice, when you've zoomed in, you don't really lose much picture quality by going through the transparent display. That's particularly when we the interest here. Because if you're going to have a transparent display and degrade the background, but you can see clearly through it. You're going to have a wonderful scene. Like so it's this. very transparent. Yes, uh, it's about 80%. Transparent. And what is the technology going on here for doing this transparency? Well, we had introduced this before. It's our RGB LED lighting without any color filters. 
Did this is a handheld? Or no? no, this is just again an idea. If you will imagine yeah. some sort of handheld device with this kind of display. Let me hold that up for you. Nice. That's really awesome. So uh, thanks a lot for uh, letting me film all your cool stuff. And I'll be filming also with your, with your colleague. Uh, I already filmed. I know, but I have one more set of oh, products to show you. Yeah, here. maybe they're off. Cool. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, no, yeah. we have these. They're okay. Nice. These are 32 inch. MIP or that's memory in pixel reflective displays. Now, memory smaller, in pixel? Yeah, the smaller ones, for example, here where the light's really on this one, you can see that it's very colorful. It's like my memory LCD? Uh, it could be. <laughs> so is a memory LCD? Yeah, in that sense. That's right. And these are actually some of the products in the market already. So with the memory in pixel, you get extremely low power consumption, especially when you have a static image because you can save that image in the pixel structure. Yeah, mine has seven day battery life. So so this, what's the latest with the memory on pixel? Um, there's been some developments, it's even better and better now. Uh, well, one of the most recent things we really did was improve the color gamut. You can see, for example, here, we've gone up to 262,000 colors. So that's really making the yeah. smartwatch is very cool. And then as very well, usable. this is so little power consumption. What was kind of cool the other day, for one particular customer, if this were outdoors, if you get the idea, this could be a digital yeah. desktop or digital signage. It could be used outside, outside with sunlight readability. I know right now that it's That's a, a nice little big one. bit. Is that the biggest one? Yeah. Nice. If I and if you yeah, and if you do that, or if you had it out in sunlight, which would really illuminate it, it would look quite well. Quite good. Nice. And uh, it would be able to run on this little solar thing. Exactly. I mean, it's with a battery backup or something, you just run it all day and wait for the, you know, all. And the it could even run overnight because that's it right. has enough on the, on the yes, battery, maybe. That's correct. And then uh, usually in the city, there's like street lights that might be enough to also light it up. That's true. Potentially correct. at night. Yes. That's really cool. So this is a, a production product. Shipping. Yes. Awesome. So yes. Uh, as the last part of the video, we'll check with your friend um, the. Oh, on uh, the industrial yeah. sector? I feel, yeah, I feel yeah really wonderful. Good. Please do. Yeah, okay. very Thanks good. And thank My name is Biff Kinney, and I'm with JDI America Inc. And today I'm going to introduce our industrial line of display products that we're <laughs> exhibiting here at SID 2019. So JDI is, uh, has special skills in making these kind of displays? Yes. Uh, our industrial line of displays, uh, most of them are what we call our Rugged Plus line of displays. And Rugged Plus means that these displays all have a high and low temperature range of minus 35 degrees Celsius all the way up to plus 85 degrees Celsius. And in some cases, we even go down to minus 40 degrees Celsius. So where do they go, in like uh, big trucks and big things? Yeah, so um, many of these displays do go in automotive type products, but they actually go in industrial products of all types, medical displays uh, for patient monitoring systems. Uh, many of these are, are, uh, are uh, display clusters for automotive products. Uh, boats, RVs, uh, we have many of them in industrial ovens. In the factories? Yeah, uh, a lot of them in factory automations, uh, user interface systems, um, any type of, of industrial display where a very rugged display is needed. And uh, what we really specialize is in long life of our displays. All of our displays that we introduce will have a lifespan of 7, 10, in some cases even 15 years. How can you test that? Does it take you 7, 10 years to test it? No, actually, we we bring these uh, we start development work and we bring these displays to the market in under a year. Once they're on the market and our customers uh, approve these displays and begin production with them, we then keep them alive for uh, five, uh, seven, ten, fifteen years sometimes. So once our customer designs in one of our displays, they can depend on that display being available to them for a long time to come. Because it's not easy to go and replace the display. Well, no, no. It's, I mean, it, it, it's maybe easier than other displays, but it's not that easy. Well, no, no, it's not easy at all. You're talking about uh, there's still no such thing as a drop-in replacement. So there's uh, there's mechanical considerations, electrical considerations, optical considerations. So once this is is designed in, it's a stable product and here for a long time to come. And so what are you showing here? Yeah, this is a uh, this is a new 6.3 inch display that we've just now introduced, and uh, this display features IPS technology. So it has a, a viewing cone, and from any angle, this uh, the viewing uh, on this uh, display is equally the same. And uh, this display is also um, 
a very rugged display. Like most of our displays, it has threaded metallic mounting bosses on the back of it, so it has a very rugged mounting design. When you mount this display to, uh, to a, a piece of equipment, uh, if it's dropped, uh, it, it will always survive that type of a rugged environment. And then we move on to uh, a seven inch display. Now this display is also uh, <laughs> fairly new. This display is 1200 nits of brightness. It also features IPS technology, so it's viewable from any angle, top, bottom, side to side. Uh, this display also uh, is in our Rugged Plus family of displays. And in Rugged Plus, we guarantee uh, the specification will have zero bright dots. And what that, what that means to say is that this display will not have a bright green dot or a bright red dot, black, bright blue dot. We guarantee that this ha will have no bright dot defects whatsoever. Not that pixel. Yep. No, no, no bright, no bright, pixel. no, no bright, not just pixel, dot. So dot. we take it all the way down to the dot with our bright specification. <laughs> and um, so this is a seven inch uh, wide VGA, 1200 nits of brightness, a thousand to one contrast. <laughs> this is a brand new LCD. This is a seven inch wide XGA. It's 1280 by 768 in resolution, IPS technology. It looks very beautiful, kind of. Yes, like sir. good colors. Oh, yes, sir. It's a thousand nits of brightness and a thousand to one on the contrast ratio. This also has the threaded metallic mounting bosses in the back, and so it has a very rugged uh, mounting design. And the mechanical system on this is designed to go in any type of uh, an industrial or a, a rugged boat, automotive, truck. Uh, any type of application like that. This is a larger version of that display. This is an 8 inch wide XGA. It also 1280 by 768 <laughs> IPS technology, 1000 nits of brightness, uh, 1000 to 1 on contrast ratio. Minus 30 to plus 85. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's extended temperature ranges. So those are operating temperatures and those are ambient operating temperatures. What we're saying is in our specification that those operating temperatures in the environment, and we're not talking about the temperature of the glass itself, but the environment at this end will actually work at minus 35 to plus 85 degrees Celsius. Are you unbeatable in this kind of market? I'm sorry, one more you, time? You're the market leader for this? This kind oh, of stuff? Yes, yes. Uh, we, have a very, we have a very special niche in the market that, uh, as you know, our company, JDI, is very strong in the automotive industry. And what we do is we use uh, glass cells, actual glass cells that we, uh, that we sell into the automotive industry, and we spin those into these standard off-the-shelf industrial displays. So what you're seeing here is these are all standard display products. These, uh, these are not custom. So uh, these are part numbers that we keep on the shelf, and uh, they're, they're, they just have a standard lead time associated with them, and there's nothing custom about these displays. How long time displays. will be available? Do you I'm have sorry? like a, a, a certain amount of time you leave yeah. them on the market? Yeah, we keep these in the market. Minimum of five years, uh, seven, ten, up to 15 years is very, very common for us. So people can reorder the same one? That's, uh, that's one of our benefits, is the fact that we do keep our products alive for a long, long time. And this is a new product that we've also introduced, and this is an 8.8 .8 inch. And this also uh, originally came from the automotive market, and this has in-cell touch. Uh, the touch panel and touch capabilities are actually built into the glass stack up. So uh, this does not have a cover or a, uh, a capacitive touch panel laminated. It's actually built in to the LCD capacitive, itself. Uh, yes, yes. And high, high touch. Yes, and then you can, and then you can add a cover glass uh, to this, and that could be a custom cover glass of any size. And Because uh, when you have big machines, let's say, and you want to trigger stuff, it's important that it triggers correctly. Exactly right. And uh, all of the displays I'm showing you here uh, do have optional PCAP touch panels available to them, and we can optically bond those. We have standard touch panels and standard cover glass that we can sell to our customers, or if our customer wants a custom artwork cover glass, uh, a custom size cover glass, we can also provide that to our customers. So not only do we have these standard parts, but we can value add things like custom cover glasses, custom PCAPs, for whatever that customer application uh, may happen to be. And this is a very new panel we also introduced. This is a 10.1 inch wide XGA. This is 1280 by 800 IPS technology, a thousand nits of brightness, a thousand to one on the contrast ratio. It's got the automotive grade temperature range and it also has the high rugged mounting system 
that you've seen on the other LCDs with the threaded metallic What's bosses the on the back of it. What's connectors and stuff here? Uh, yeah, so these are these uh, connectors. Uh, these are mostly LVDS connections uh, that you see on our, our displays. Yeah. And uh, some other automotive derivatives that we have include these types of instrument clusters. This is a 10.3 inch. This is uh, the aspect ratio on this is eight by three. And this is a 10.3 inch diagonal and it's IPS technology. So you can mount this portrait, you can mount it landscape, like all of our displays. Uh, and have the same viewing angles from any direction. A thousand nits of brightness, a thousand and one on the contrast here. Uh, the high low temperature range, it has the rugged mounting system, and this one actually goes from minus 40 to plus 85 degrees Celsius. A display like this is quite expensive because it's specially, specially specialized market? Um, they're actually not uh, what I would call expensive. We have these uh, priced uh, in the market range, but the nice thing about this when it comes to price is the fact that these are standard products. A customer doesn't need to pay any NRE, the customer doesn't need to pay any development costs. These are, are specialized products uh, that are automotive rugged as standard products. And they're ready to ready. Buy. We, we keep We keep them on the shelf and uh, we're ready to... We're ready all to, over the U.S.? Uh, all yeah, over well, the world? All over the world. Yes, sir. Uh, we're a we're, we're, we're wide supplier. And then this guy is a 12.3 inch diagonal, 8 by 3 on the aspect ratio, another instrument cluster. And this guy has even additional stability with seven mounting tabs around the uh, exterior of the frame. And it also is IPS technology, so it can also be mounted in landscape or portrait. And you see there in that beautiful portrait mode, that viewing angles are beautiful. And it's also a thousand nits of brightness. It's a thousand one on contrast. And uh, the IPS technology with the high-low temperature range. Do you do any 4K industrial? Uh, yes, we actually do, and uh, that would be uh, an example of that is right here. This is a 13.3 inch 4K 2K, and uh, this is built into an industrial package. It has 350 nits of brightness. Now this one, unlike the ones I've shown you previously, which are, are rugged plus, this one has industrial grade uh, temperature range of minus 20 to plus 70. And what's it got behind here? Oh, this is, this is just uh, the, the demo set um, driver electronics so what we actually provide to the market is simply this uh, LCD itself with the connectors that uh, the customer would use to connect it to their particular system and you can see that this is uh, this is an LVDS panel and uh, for, what, would, what would be the use cases for 4k in the industrial market well uh, a lot of a lot of user interfaces a lot of uh, a lot of medical uh, applications for patient monitoring systems maybe architects uh, you know, some some guys might might use this in an architectural People application. In the and and uh, what we actually developed it for was a rugged tablet. So you use uh, see a lot of these in rugged tablet uh, PC applications. And one thing I need to, to mention, and for example, this 6.4, and many of the displays I've shown you utilize LTPS technology as opposed to amorphous silicon, which is this, a JDI technology. No. Well, LTPS is a is a is a, a standard technology in the industry. And in the past, it's primarily used for cell phones. And the advantage of a LTPS uh, technology is that we can drive higher brightness. This panel is 1,400 nits of brightness. And we're able to achieve that because it is LTPS. The transmittance characteristics of LTPS enable us to drive a higher brightness with a lower, uh, with a lower current drive to the backlights. It also runs much cooler. So well, that's great for a very place where you go up out in the sun. Or in a boat. You know, uh, uh, our customers who are our boat customers who install these uh, in instrument clusters for their boats, uh, they like to have a cool operating uh, system in a boat or even in an aircraft. We do a lot of uh, aircraft applications because uh, in an aircraft application, they do like to use them in, in portrait mode. So our IPS technology enables us to install this portrait or landscape. Are you able to do the touch uh, option without taking any visibility off the screen or it always takes a little bit? No, it always takes a little bit. We usually, we use 20% as uh, as kind of the the actual number that uh, we, we see on average. Uh, so this, this uh, LCD, which is uh, 1,400 nits of brightness without any touch applied, once we apply a touch, we would expect to see this go down to maybe something in between 1,000 and, and 1,200 nits of brightness. So it would still be 
uh, extremely bright and usable in an outdoor application, even with a, a touch panel cover glass applied to it. Uh, are you able to say if this market is like a growing market? Like this is. Oh uh, yes, sir. Oh, there's yeah. there's no question about it. Uh, we've seen uh, we've seen a great a tremendous amount of growth, especially in the past two years, uh, in the industrial market. Um, we're very fortunate that these products that we provide to the market, uh, there's a lot of demand for this type of product because we're seeing uh, more customers demand a wider aspect ratio, which is what we offer. They're demanding a brighter LCD, which is what we're offering. <laughs> and they're demanding rugged environment LCDs. And so uh, our product line addresses all of those points. And so yes, uh, I would say that we are, we are growing uh, uh, quite well here at JDI.